Thank you. I'm really excited to be here and to meet Sharon and all of you and to have environmental health included in this conversation. So it's really, really great to be here. Um, I am going to start at the beginning, not the end. Um, in 1993, the state of Massachusetts for the first time released cancer incidence rates by town. And leaders in the Massachusetts Breast Cancer Coalition noticed that nearly all the towns on Cape Cod had higher incidence than the statewide rate. And thousands of women gathered in Boston to ask the state to find out why. Um, the women were shocked that that why question wasn't really that much part of the cancer research agenda, and that environmental factors in particular had not been investigated. And they decided that they needed a lab of their own to pursue this question of environmental factors and prevention. And they hired their own science team and raised a million dollars a year for about eight years from the state to um, begin this inquiry. So we're, we're a citizen-owned science team. And you, you can kind of put that in your definitional uh, sphere where, wherever it fits for you. Um, the activists remain in governance roles uh, at the Institute. We celebrated our 20th anniversary this year. So uh, motivated by questions about environment and breast cancer, we study endocrine disrupting compounds and uh, chemicals that, are, that cause mammary gland tumors in animal studies. So these are um, common consumer product chemicals, and they're in plastics, detergents, cosmetics, and they're in air and water pollution. So um, the Cape Cod study began with a, a three-year scoping process that involved uh, community mapping, uh, lots of community meetings to identify hypotheses. And we ended up, uh, as part of the, Cape, the second phase of the Cape Cod study, um, testing for 89 endocrine disruptors in household air and dust and urine samples in 120 homes. For 30 of these chemicals, uh, this was the first time they had been tested uh, in the U.S. indoors. Then, to really understand whether Cape Cod was different in a way that might explain breast cancer incidents, we needed to go someplace else very different. Uh, and we moved next to Richmond, California. It's uh, in the Bay Area. Uh, you can see the homes are in that yellow circle there next to a Chevron oil refinery. Uh, a marine port and between uh, rail and highway routes. Uh, and at the request of the community advisory committee there, we, oh, oh I forgot to, I wanted to show you, like this, this was not a good neighbor situation. Um, the, the Chevron caught fire uh, during our study and it, it blew up shortly after. Um, at the request of the community, uh, we also included a Northern California comparison uh, up the coast in Bolinas. Uh, and this research, I think it's important to note, was facilitated by uh, an NIEHS environmental justice grant, uh, which really illustrates some of the characteristics of, of uh, how NIH can support citizen science. Uh, the program officer, Shoba Srinivasan, encourage Silent Spring to be the principal investigator. Uh, we would never have, a, we never would have applied or succeeded without her support. And that was transformative, both for me personally and for Silent Spring as an organization. Uh, this funding program was focused on capacity building and communication, and it didn't require preliminary data. It didn't even require a formal hypotheses. And that also was crucial to the success of the project, because it meant we could be very responsive to uh, community needs. And we ended up adding 20 analytes that were of interest to try to fingerprint the refinery. Um, and I know there was discussion yesterday about uh, quality and, and ethics requiring quality. So I, I want to just brag a little bit. This project has produced uh, 14 peer-reviewed articles six uh, additional grants going to all the different partners, um, two K awards among the young researchers on the team, 
Uh, and scientific discoveries that led to three uh, public health policy changes. One just went into effect the uh, California revision of the California flammability standard. So you can now buy a couch at IKEA without flame retardants in it. Um, uh, a court decision that required cumulative impact assessment for expansion of the ref before they could expand the refinery. Uh, and uh, EPA health risk assessments for consumer products. So um, this has been probably the most productive grant I've ever managed. Um, so we did end up in some LC zones uh, throughout it, of course, but particularly at the end. And I want to talk about um, reporting results to participants and communities and uh, the question of sharing data online. So very shortly after we finished collecting all the samples, on Cape Cod, our Cape Cod coordinator started getting phone calls and getting cornered in the grocery store. And Cheryl, wh when are we getting our results? So uh, in the context of a, a science activist partnership, um, we knew that we were going to have to work that out. And that began a long process of developing methods and then studying them to see what worked. So we've now um, interviewed participants, researchers, and IRB members in eight studies and held a workshop for 44 stakeholders on it um, and uh, developed some consensus across this group, although it's very much an evolving field, um, about what, how, how and what to report to people when the health effects are uncertain. There are some parallels to genetics, but it's important to remember that for environmental chemicals, um, there are opportunities to take action to reduce exposure. So I'm going to skip ahead and just say um, it can be done well. Um, we've uh, written a handbook and a peer-reviewed article about this, the results of this uh, review of eight different studies. I have a couple copies I'd be glad to give to people. It's also online. In addition to the experiences of the participants, uh, which I skipped over, I think uh, from an LC perspective, it's, it's also interesting to think about the experiences of the researchers. Um, they, it ended up that focusing on individual results and knowing you had to tell someone their own results um, does result in different kind of scientific discovery. We published two papers that resulted from this. Um, there's a great temptation to reassure, so you have to be careful to keep honest. It's, it's not easy. Um, there's a challenge for researchers to address policy level change. So when you find something in, so for example, flame retardants, you can't really not use couches. So um, that requires a different kind of communication of, of what you can do uh, when you're reporting results about these kinds of chemicals. Uh, researchers, of course, do uh, encounter problems with resources, with timing of when to report. Um, we're developing digital methods now that will make it more practical to create personalized reports in large studies um, and trying to develop methods that tap the universal cognitive capacities and rely less on uh, what people might learn in school. We wanted to place our data in EPA's ExpoCast database. Uh, EPA wanted it. Um, but we became concerned that we didn't really know whether the environmental data itself could lead to re-identification. So we're working now, uh, both doing an empirical experiment to see how re-identifiable our data are, um, and uh, an inquiry uh, in collaboration with the Personal Genome Project uh, and the Avon Army of Women to find out what people think about um, their privacy and, and what uh, do they understand what the privacy risks are and what is their willingness to give up certain kinds of privacy. So I know I'm out of time, but I want to just say, like, at the top of my list are justice issues. Uh, and one thing that I think is important at the end of this study is building infrastructure so that the data can be used. Um, you can't really just put it on the web, and especially if it's citizen posted, you need uh, a curator to make sure that it, it's analyzable 
by people who don't have huge resources of their own to make it uh, accessible. Um, IRB issues have come up again and again. Um, I also want to mention that, that I think we have some things to talk about, about the role of those in the university in uh, being part of translating the results to, to uh, public policy for environmental health. And I um, hope you'll come. The, I have a lot of partners in this, which is a lot of IRBs, um, and I thank them all. And hope you'll come visit us sometime on the internet or in Boston. Thank you.